In this video, we look at analyzing hyperbolas. Now, we have looked at analyzing linear functions and parabolas, so you should become, have become very familiar with these types of questions, so I will be going through them faster. Now, for this first example, it says consider the graph of f of x equals 2 over x minus 2. Determine the values of x for which, so again, the values of x, and we have three typical types of questions. Now, where f of x equals 0 is where y equals 0, so you should recognize that that is asking for the x-intercept value. And we can clearly see from the graph that that value is 1. So we're x equals 1. Okay, now then we have to find the x values where f of x is greater or equal to 0. Okay, where f of x is greater than 0, it's where the y values are positive, which is above the x-axis. So identify the part of the graph using the y-coordinates. So above the x-axis is this part of the graph. Okay, now remember that this graph continues forevermore, but it does not cross the asymptote, which is sitting on the y-axis at this point. Okay, so if I want to find the if I want to write the x values representing this part of the graph, okay, they start at 0 and end at 1. So the x values here lie between two numbers. So if that is the case, literally write x between those two numbers. The lower number on the left, the higher number on the right. If you've done that, it will always be less than, less than then what you need to carefully consider is do you include either of these values? Okay, so if I look at 0, even though it says where f of x is greater or equal to 0, just because there's an equal sign there does not mean I automatically include an equal sign there. Okay, understand the, what the 0 represents on the graph. x equals 0 is my y-axis, which is the asymptote. That is where the graph is undefined, so we definitely cannot include the 0. The 1, on the other hand, is our x-intercept, and that is where f of x is equal to 0. So we do definitely include the 1. So your inequality signs can be different. You have to carefully consider whether you include the value or not. Looking at question 3, it says we have to find the values of x for which f of x is less than 0. That's where the y values are negative. So it's where the graph is below the x-axis. So we go to the graph and we identify the part of the graph that we are interested in. One, two parts. Okay, so if there are two parts of the graph, it means that we will have two inequalities in our answer. Okay, so sorry, I've drawn a very terrible line there. But to depict this arm of the graph, okay, consider the lower and the upper limit. The lower limit would be negative infinity here, okay. The upper limit for this part of the graph is the asymptote there, okay. The asymptote's value is zero. So you could write this as from negative infinity to zero as an, inter an interval notation, or as an inequality, we would just say that this is the part where x is less than 0. Again, we cannot include 0 because it is an asymptote. Okay, but now we have a second part of the graph, so we need a second inequality. Okay, looking at the x values here, the lower limit is 1, the upper limit is infinity. So as an inequality, we would say that these are the x values that are greater than 1. So x is greater than 1. Right, looking at a second example, here we have to consider the graphs of f of x equal to 6 over x minus 3. So that is the hyperbola. So I'm just going to label the diagram here. So that is f of x. And g of x equals 2 over 3x minus 3. Notice carefully that the x for g of x is in the, denom in the numerator. Sorry, not in the denominator here. Okay, so... Um, g of x is your straight line graph. 
Okay, and of course this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. Okay, now it says determine the values of x, there it is again, for which f of x is equal to g of x. Now that you should recognize as the points of intersection. So we need to find the x values of the points of intersection. Now, since there are no values on this graph, it means that we have to calculate them. So I want the x value there and the x value there because those are the x values of our points of intersection. So we calculate them algebraically. So f of x equals g of x means that I substitute f of x. So I have 6 over x minus 3 equals g of x, which is 2 thirds x minus 3. Now I have um, an equation with fractions, so I multiply by the lowest common denominator to get rid of the fractions. So my denominators are x and 3, so my LCD is 3x. So now I multiply every term by that 3x, okay? And you don't have to show this level of working that I'm going to show now, but I am going to show it so that everybody clearly sees what's going on. My first term is 6 over x, I'm going to multiply that by 3x. My second term is negative 3, I multiply that by 3x. My third term is 2 over 3 and then x. Now I'm going to write that x in the numerator. Okay, if it's the coefficient, I can write it in the numerator. And we are going to multiply that by 3x. Then I have negative 3, which I also multiply by 3x. Okay, so... I can cancel the x's. 6 times 3 gives me 18. Minus 3 times 3 is 9x. The 3's I can cancel and I'm left with 2x squared here minus 9x. This is a quadratic equation. So I have to write it in standard form. So I bring everything to one side. Adding 9x leaves me with no x terms. But I do have 2x squared minus 18. If I divide through by 2, I'm left with x squared minus 9, which factorizes as difference of squares. And if I let each factor equal 0, I have x equals negative 3 or x equals 3. Now, the answer asks, sorry, the question asks for the values of x. So these are the values of x. So that means my left... Um, Point of intersection has the x value negative 3 and the point of intersection on the right has the value of 3. Okay so looking at question b it says we give the values of x for which f of x is greater than g of x. Now again this means where the y values of f of x are above the y values of g of x so it is where f of x is above g of x. So Using the y-coordinates, we find that part of the graph, okay, going from left to right, I notice that f of x is above g of x here, and f of x is above g of x there, okay. So I need to represent these two parts with two inequalities, okay. So I'll write my answer here. So for b, okay, the x values for this part of the graph Okay, the lower limit is negative infinity, the upper limit is negative 3. So I can write this as all the x values that are less than negative 3. I don't include the negative 3 because it didn't also ask where f of x was greater than or equal to g of x. Okay, let me just erase it. Okay, so the second part of the graph here now again this graph continues forever more but it doesn't um, cross over the asymptote okay so the x values here oops sorry so the x values here lie between the asymptote and the point of intersection so the lower limit is the value of the vertical asymptote which is zero and the upper limit is the x value of the point of intersection, which is 3. So just notice my lower limit, upper limit, x I've written in between them. Then I add, then I write in the less than, less than. 
I don't include the value of the asymptote. And in this case, I won't include 3 because it doesn't want um, the values where the graphs are equal. Okay. Right, looking at C, um, it's asking for the values of x where f of x is less than or equal to g of x. Okay, so this is then where f of x is below g of x. So go to the graph, identify the part of the graph. This is where f of x is below the straight line. Again, where f of x is below the straight line. So again, two parts of the graph. I need to represent the x values. Okay, and now notice that it also includes the points where f of x is equal to g of x. So I'm going to include the x values of the points of intersection. So the x coordinates, okay, so my lower limit is the negative 3. The upper limit is the value x value of the asymptote. I will write less than, less than. I will include the point of intersection but I will not include the value of the asymptote. Okay, second part, okay, it's x values go from 3 to positive infinity. So as an inequality, I can write this as x is all the values that are greater than 3, and it also wanted the points of intersection, so I include that 3. x is greater or equal to 3.